Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this Monday. I'm Journey Taylor and here are the top stories we're following for you now at noon. The U.S. military shot down more unidentified objects over the weekend. The response from the White House and what we're learning now. Plus another big day in court for a troubled apartment. A preview on this afternoon's hearing for Big Country Chateau coming up. And now a week removed from the devastating earthquake in Syria and Turkey. A look at the effort still underway to find survivors. But first, Nathan Scott joins us. Nathan, I am so enjoying this Monday, but I'm hearing news that Mother Nature is not going to be as loving tomorrow for Valentine's Day. Oh, good <laughs> afternoon, Journey. Yeah, we are starting off the new work week with some fantastic weather on our Monday. Lots of sun, temperatures unseasonably warm for this time of year. Look at this. We're already into the low to mid 60s across the board. 66 in Russellville, 64 in Pine Bluff, 60 in Arkadelphia, and 63 in Searcy. Highs today. Probably mid to upper 60s would not be surprised if some locations reach 70 degrees. Tomorrow, though, Mother Nature goes sour on us. Look at this good chance of showers and storms rolling it their way through here through the morning into the afternoon hours. But I do think it will clear out for the evening. So if you're taking your sweetheart out to dinner tomorrow evening, I think it will be dry. Also tomorrow, we're going to have the wind machine really kick into gear. Winds tomorrow could be 30 to as high as 50 mile per hour gusts for a large part of Arkansas. All the counties that you see shaded in the brown. That means it's going to be whipping winds expected throughout the day. So definitely have to hold on to your hats. Tomorrow's severe threat, very, very low. The chance of strong, possibly severe thunderstorms re-enter the forecast going into later Wednesday, Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. I'll have more on that potential coming up. Nathan, thank you. What started off as a suspected Chinese spy balloon being shot down nine days ago off the coast of South Carolina has now become a much broader intelligence investigation with more flying objects blown out of the sky. On Sunday, the U.S. military shot down yet another unidentifiable flying object. Nicole D'Antonio has the latest from the White House. For three days in a row, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the U.S. military shot down objects over Alaska, Canada's Yukon Territory, and Lake Huron. That's after an American fighter jet destroyed a Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina more than a week ago. The fourth unmanned object was shot down by an F-16 over Lake Huron Sunday near Michigan. It was first detected Saturday over Montana. Lake Huron has been choppy, so it's been difficult to recover. Uh, there's a joint U.S. Uh, Canadian effort to make sure we keep eyes on that, that equipment and pick it up. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says recovery teams are on the ground looking to find and analyze the objects shot down over Canada's Yukon Territory. We will continue to do everything necessary. Uh, to protect the sovereignty of our air, of our shared North American airspace. Biden administration officials say the three objects were much smaller than the Chinese spy balloon, appear to be different shapes and flew at altitudes that could jeopardize passenger airlines. Since the Chinese balloon incident, the U.S. has enhanced radars to more closely monitor U.S. airspace, which might explain the increase in activity. What's gone on the last, uh, you know, two weeks or so, 10 days, has been uh, nothing short of um, craziness. On Monday, China claimed the U.S. has flown more than 10 high altitude balloons over its airspace in the last few years. U.S. security officials denied the accusation, saying in a tweet that it's the latest example of China scrambling to do damage control. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, the White House. Now back here in Little Rock this afternoon, a judge will hear the latest from the inspections at Big Country Chateau. Those inspections started close to a week ago. We do know that 81 units at least are occupied by authorized tenants. Big Country Chateau was in court Friday morning where a judge wanted clarity. On where is all the money to assist with repairs and pay utilities? The property owner's attorney had this to say. A major component of how we got here today, however, is as of right now, there's nearly $300,000 in back rent owed to my clients. Kind of hard to keep the lights on when you're not collecting enough revenue. Now, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. calling this all an emergency situation and that the city will continue to work to address the issue, including now helping residents with relocation assistance. Today is the last day of early voting in North Little Rock for the proposed public library system millage increase. 
Currently, the library is assessed at three mills on property taxes, but they're asking voters to approve an increase to five mills. The millage would provide two million in funding that the library says will go towards building improvements, programs, and a mobile library. The last day to vote is election day, uh, which is tomorrow. Now we also have some breaking news or some THV 11 news update. The lone survivor in a triple shooting is recovering at a hospital this morning. We first told you about the shooting in the East Arkansas town of Mariana over the weekend. Arkansas State Police are now joining the investigation and they tell us two men were shot and killed at a home on Florida Street in Mariana on Saturday. The victims identified as 32 year old Albert Dillard and 59 year old Arthur Hill. A 32 year old man survived being shot and was taken to a Memphis hospital. State police are still investigating what led up to the shooting and have not announced any arrest. Pulaski County's juvenile detention center fired an officer for quote violent and unacceptable language toward a teen. This is what we know so far on February 6th. Three officers are reported to have subdued someone using force. That force prompted an investigation. It found that one of the officers used, quote, violent and inappropriate language toward the residents. That officer was fired this week, but not identified. Pulaski County Judge Barry Hyde says because of all of this, every officer is being enrolled in regular de-escalation training. Well, it's been one week since the deadly earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, and the heartbreak continues. The death toll has now surpassed 35,000 people. Rescuers are still finding survivors, though they are fewer and farther between. CBS News correspondent MTIS Tayyip is in Hatay, Turkey. The city of Hatay has suffered the worst of the worst. But even with destruction on a scale that's hard to fathom, these men say they won't stop searching. Even after a week, rescue workers say they hope they'll find survivors. But more often than not, they're finding bodies. Like the remains of this mother and daughter, yet more victims of this incomprehensible tragedy. For those left to look for something warm to wear, donated clothing are left in piles on the street. But none of this is a substitute for what the people of Hatay, a once prosperous city, no longer have. It's a tragedy that has turned grief into rage. This man is smashing the logo of a well-known construction company who he blames for shoddy construction work that led to these buildings collapse. So this used to be your home? Yeah, yeah. But for Arif Sinikoglu, he doesn't have time to be angry. As we stand on what used to be his family's home, he says he's too busy looking for loved ones. Uh, we have found our grandmother here yesterday, but we cannot find our grandfather. Incredibly, survivors have to pay out of their own pockets to run and fuel these diggers. You will not stop until you find your grandfather. Yeah, of course. We'll dig with, my, with our hands. The UN has announced that its rescue phase has come to a close and that it will instead start providing things like food, water and shelter, which is small comfort for people like Arif, who desperately cling on to the hopes of finding their loved ones under all this rubble. Imtiaz Taib, CBS News, Hatay, Turkey. Well, we turn to a problem THV 11 has been investigating for two years, drag racing. And now it's left two dead as a person racing hit an innocent couple driving around Little Rock one Saturday afternoon. The incident happened last year. Jeremy and Trisha McCool were on I-30 when, according to police, another driver, Byron Chavez Velasquez, rear-ended them, forcing their car off of the road. The McCools died and Chavez Velasquez heading to court the maximum time he will serve, if found guilty, a year in jail. It's absolutely senseless. I mean, this isn't your Saturday night folks drag racing out in the middle of nowhere. These people are running 120 miles an hour down Interstate 30 at 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. 
when you have instances where drag racing is involved, that is a decision that somebody makes to initiate dangerous behavior on the roadways, and that always affects other people, innocent motorists. Tonight at 10, THV 11's Ashley Godwin finds out how state troopers are working to stop the crime on interstates and what's next for the man who will plead his case to a judge and jury. Well, all eyes were on the Super Bowl yesterday. After the break, some of the best ads that already have people buzzing. And we also have another look at weather. I'm loving this Monday. And if you need to get your Valentine's gift, I would get it today because tomorrow if you get flowers, they may be torn apart by the gusty winds expected. I'll have more on that forecast and the potential. Uh, maybe some strong to severe thunderstorms later in the work week coming up.